Hey, what's up guys? Before you get into the video, if you are a startup or very early on in your business, you are going to wanna watch the entire video. I know it's long, it is an hour long. Um, it's several meetings with a bunch of people doing startup stuff, so there's incredible amounts of information if you pay attention to it. You might wanna let this play in the background, consume it like a podcast, um, or, or pay close attention to it and watch it. Either way, I hope you consume the whole thing. Let me know what you think about this long form video. I'll be very curious to hear your feedback on it. I also talk about a giveaway at the end, so I hope you stick around uh, for that. Now on to the video that you wanted to watch. Oh, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the vlog. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome, oh God. Oh God, <laughs> to, uh, back to the vlog, old school vlog, super busy day today, so I have Travis uh, filming things because I haven't had a lot of time to like make a dedicated video about any one particular subject matter, so vlog style it is. Today, I'm meeting with a bunch of people, there's some like startup information and chatting with some old people and things like that. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. There's great information, um, and enjoy the video. This is M-A-T Matt. <laughs> <laughs> or even on that wall over there. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> I'm still trying to find out where to put stuff around here. You guys, we have to do a proper like tour video. Maybe you guys will get a tour out of today because a lot of people stopping by and we'll give them a tour. So maybe you guys will get a, a proper tour. Lots has happened. Lots has, ha lots, lots has happened uh, in here since you guys saw it last. We've finally gotten some things organized. The second floor is all put together for the most part. And now, finally, months later, I've got some pictures. I'm trying to figure out where to hang. What do you guys, what do you think? I don't know if I want to put them over there. Like, if I want to do a bunch of, like, I could do a bunch of these car magazine ones on that wall or spread them out. That wall's pretty funny. It is. It is, but this is also the wall that like most people would see coming in that way. I feel like most people aren't looking at that wall. They're just looking more at this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nerf wall's gonna go there, I think. Mm. I don't know. I feel like the car stuff should go in the shop. Zoinkers! What's up, man? What's up? How you doing, man? I got work. Uh, what this, is this? This is your dad's Neumann. Oh, you f***ing rock, dude. And uh, it was his prized f***ing possession in the yeah. shop. And Wanna... it's been sitting on my shelf. You're not doing anything with it? I mean, I got mics, but I, I usually use lots and wireless and stuff. Yeah. This is all. Thanks, dude. I'll give you the quick tour. Dude, he's going to be so f***ing pumped for oh, this. Oh, I told him. I had, I had coffee with him a couple days ago. Awesome. So I, was, I know you do your podcast and stuff, and this was, you know, this is what he did his... The, yeah, everything with him, everything. sure. He, he talks about it all the time. He loved his velvet pipes through that mic. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's the awesome. Tones. Yeah, I'll carry the, well, I'll take this back to the office in a minute. Especially when you're doing a control environment, right, and you have fixed focus, mm -hmm. and you can just focus on your content, and it doesn't look like a camcorder. Right. You know what I mean? That's the big, you know, that these things changed everything. Yeah. These things changed everything, you know? The most used and, camera on the planet. Right. And the, uh, and it you doesn't use, look, do you use like Filmic Pro? No, but I've thought about it recently, okay. but we got to use this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so like, if you're doing a one man, you know, like yeah. you got a little Osmo or something like that and you're in Filmic, but you get all of the Pro. $7 app, $1,000 phone. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but still, but that's it. Right. You're done. And then, and then it's everything. You got to figure it. Now, see, I say it's everything, and it's a lot of people. When I get on the internet, I just want to punch my head against the wall. Nobody cares about audio, right? They I keep the keep. They, they keep it close. It sounds okay. You do, right? You but do. I've had to learn over the years. Yeah, I mean, like, but it's a, it's trial and error. But the, I'm my, you know, and the thing is, with what you guys are doing is personal marketing, right? Right. My kids, like, um, if I were to walk through the living room while they're watching the YouTube, right? I'm like, that looks like shit. 
they won't talk to me for two days. It they're, they're family to these people. Like yeah. They're in their lives. It's personal. It's unbelievable. Right. This is actually a really good point. So here's Dave, who's an extreme professional in video production. You've been doing it for how long? 30 years? Yeah, almost. Yeah, 20 some, 28. At the highest levels of like crazy high quality stuff. And he's always like messaging me. He's like, hey, if you, need, if you need another mic, let me know, you know, because so like, like audio. You're going, to, you're going to China or you're going yeah. somewhere and I see your setup and you got the little road. And I'm like, you're going to use that little road? I get some Sennheisers. I'm gonna yeah, I mean, that's what I got here now, right? Yeah. Sennheiser, lav mic. Yeah. Like, so back to our point, yeah. right? You make video at the highest production value and it's perfect. And then you go and look at viral videos to get all the views and that people mm -hmm. are paying the most attention to and they're shot on a cell phone mm -hmm. and they look like shit yep. and we're picking it apart. The highlights are blown out. They're in a shadow from their hat. You can barely see their face. Yeah. The audio sounds like crap. I'm going to therapy now. Like, Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. Right. And it's crazy because like, and, and I know that, yeah. and I still try to put a lot of effort into it because I want it to like look nice and be able to stand the test of time. And in three years, it still looks nice because even though the quality of digital content is getting better and better, like I want this to still look nice in three right. years and not look like an old flip phone video. Like I did a lot of agency work, rep every hospital in the area, all the, the stuff that you would do, go to all the award shows. All the TV the, commercials, yeah, all, all the stuff the, we had on the wall. All the I how shows. many, how, like at what age did I start acting in TV commercials? <laughs> you were Hilton Head Hospital. Yeah. I, I mean, I was like you were little, in, probably yeah. kids four years old. Yeah. And people are like, how come you're so comfortable on camera? Like, because they've been in your face. <laughs> like He's been putting them in my face since I was a kid. Yeah, I've been, and you're always good. At how? Well, how? <laughs> how? Yeah. How about the video we did for the? Was it the? Was it a church video or something that was oh. like? I, you were like, no, tell your dad to. F <gasps> tell him. Oh, remember no, that? Was a I was like, oh, and you hugged it out. Still have it. Dude, please get me that. I have everything. And you're like, you're like, no. I mean, you need to like actually be like, that. and I'm well, like, I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> this guy who was nuts, but uh, he had an Amex, so <laughs> we did his. Uh, we did this. It was a behavioral thing. If you had trouble, troubled teens kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we yeah. needed a, a troubled teen, and you're a method actor. So <laughs> the uh, there was you were like, fuck you, dad. And I was like, no, fucking yell at him. Like, <laughs> we did like five, six takes of this thing. Yeah. And, you know, but at the end of it, you cursed your dad out. Your face got all red. You hugged it out. I got my shot. And we moved <laughs> you know. I but got I, paid, and everybody's happy. I'm awesome. I'd love I'm to really have you guys on the good. podcast. Me, you, Tim, and my dad. Yeah. And all of us. Me. Yeah, yeah, It'd be awesome. We would have a, yeah, we, we could tell some stories of, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 What is their business model? So they're selling golf course, like courses, like learn how to play golf? In, uh, in 2016, we were the largest golf e-commerce site in the world. And then... Uh, Golf Channel bought us in 2017. And so this is a monthly subscription model. It was a monthly subscription model, but it was also, um, it was it, basically, we, we morphed it into, you know, the money came off e-commerce, right? But what you created was, and, and this is a model, and again, it's, we're now, I would, I'm going to flash back to when I was still working with your dad. Let's go back 2008, 2009, right? I put a golf tip on YouTube using the Rev Golf you know, channel that would be, or actually at the time it was the train app. We were very early. You were doing it back then, st oh, even? Yeah, yeah. When did they start this? Uh, 2008 or 9 was when Rev Golf became Rev Golf. And I was in the hotel room in Las Vegas when they flipped the switch to go active with the thing. It was me, Tim Gill, two guys named Wayne, a guy named Dean Stricker who just kills. He's just a analytics guy. Yeah. Uh, he's the best. Just like and, and, and just Justin. He was just doing things that nobody else was doing back then. At the time, Giving yeah. Giving stuff away for free. What, what, what my kids are following around right now, he knew it in 2008 to 2009. The model that people are trying to emulate are the ones, is the one that he invented. Right. And I'm not, that's no bullshit. This guy took... Um, yeah, you gain trust that way. Yeah. There's so many... You give me your email with the, the early premise, right? Mm -hmm. And we would give you some value product, whether it was an hour's worth of free instruction that we had produced online, you could direct download a PDF book, any of that bullshit, right? Um, but then every day, every day, five days a week, you would get a free golf tip 
in your email and you could ask the pro a question and he would respond to as many of those questions as they can and it would start a dialogue. It was a fucking WordPress blog based reader when we first started. That was it. And I would post a tip on on um, uh, proper stance, right? Right. I go or home grip and throw or what a pot, a pot roast in and you know, peel some potatoes and go check my numbers at fifty three thousand views by dinner. Two and a half hours, three hours. Uh, we would hit 50,000 views. It was on YouTube? I was getting a quarter of a million unique views a week. And that number only went... Because then as he started growing, he started bringing in some of the smartest guys on people. What Justin knew, it was relationship marketing. And, and the guy, and now he's working with his wife, Tori Wilson, who's in the World Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, and they're, uh, she's a yin to his yang. They're both incredibly smart, talented people. And her, her company is called Fit Sanity. So I'm doing some work with them. Um, and But they're going back to those basics. They're on Instagram constantly. And they're doing what you Well, do. they're providing yeah. upfront value. Right. Gaining trust. And that will that uh, just... Well, it goes so much further than trying to be spammy. Sinister like that. And you can market to them over No, no, no. It's about... It really is. You have to people care about sub- each other. Yeah. You can smell the bullshit. A hundred percent. I know some people that are trying to do this kind of thing. And I'm just, you see it. You see how insincere it rings, like, when you see it every day. Like, if you get 18 posts and they're all sales bullshit, you're going to lose them. You're going to turn them off, right? Uh, yep. The, like, I love watching you take your daughter to freaking dance lessons. Right. It entertains me. Right. It's voyeuristic bullshit. You know, but I mean, what's he doing today? Oh, that's funny. Well, and Tori's doing squats in her living room, and there's the other couple people I follow, and it's personal. Right. It's not, I'm not constant, like, very rarely do you see, from, especially from the business, from Tactical Baby Gear, do you see us trying to sell you something? Unless it's Mother's Special, Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Like, yes, I'm going to be pretty transactional on these six holidays a year. So you've earned the right. Right. Because the, they want you to succeed. The rest of it is right. like, that's why we do the podcast. I'm not trying to sell you anything in the podcast. Right. Like, it's education. It's value. It's entertainment. It's, it's escapism. It's like in so many comments that we get from people and parents who are like, I love the podcast. It's so awesome. I'm about to have a, a girl. I'm so glad to know what I'm about to go through or what. Like, right. And then, you know what they're going to do? If they haven't bought a bag yet, they're likely to buy a bag because they want to support the thing. I like it. Right. It's, it's it really has, bad. it's like, and you know what I was talking but to then you have to, on the backside of it, you have to actually provide a good product and all right. that other shit. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's, it's so that's, funny. But and that's what I try to do, you know, that's what, as I build my personal brand, Beef Brody, yeah. around e-commerce and creating content and marketing and things like that, like because you don't know what you don't know, right? right. And exactly. even you back in the day were like, you got to build your email list. You got to build because right. you knew the list, on the, the back list, the list, the of list. Revolution Golf was like, right. bro, you've got to build your email list. <laughs> and email is less less impactful now than it was then right. because people are just spammed all day long with bullshit. Like it's it's hard enough to get people to like watched a podcast through an email that's like, hey, new new episodes live, go check it out. And I said this in my last video I put on YouTube that like, I'm not here trying to sell people anything. So like everything that I say that I'm trying to help people with is so sincere because I genuinely just want everyone to do well. Like right. you're not taking anything from me by you winning. I want you to win. I want, I want to be the reason that you took it to the next level. I want to be able to like take a little piece of that for myself of like, my advice or my tip or whatever helped this guy get there, right. that's cool shit. The but it's so, you know how hard it is to compete in a market where I'm trying to give out free advice and I don't, I don't, I'm not going around tooting my horn in my videos. I don't pretend to know everything. I can tell you my experience and what's worked for me and I hope it helps you, mm-hmm. but it's hard to compete in a, especially in an online marketplace like YouTube where everything else is super spammy and they're like, how, how we make $10,000 a day, I'm like, that's it, you know? <laughs> but like, but everyone else thinks it's like gold and all this yeah. stuff. And then at the end of the video, they're trying to sell you a six hundred dollar web <laughs> web course, right. you know, to actually give you some real information that you don't even know what the hell's in it, and it's usually BS anyways, it and a bunch of fluff. And these guys are making a boatload of money selling you bogus courses. My, I'm trying to give it away for free because I just think everyone should do well because I don't have to make money off of them, and it's hard to compete. Like I get no visibility, but I'm gonna keep doing it and keep doing it, and keep doing it. It's the right thing to do. I don't know. Well, no, not just personal, not for your soul, for your business. It's the right thing to do long term. 
right. It shows that you're genuine. Well, anyways, to that point though, but that's, you know, as I try to build my personal brand and be known for more than just Tactical Baby Gear, yeah. as, like I'm meeting with like four other people today that are, you know, startups or want to know about this though. or do whatever, you know, yeah. and uh, I enjoy helping those guys. I want to, on my YouTube channel, my personal, like I want to be the guy and the, the YouTube channel that I wish I had access to in the beginning. Right. That was like learning the things that would have helped me get to where I am even faster. Not that I'm looking for the easy route, but it's like, just weed out the bullshit. You know what I mean? And then, but. Mike, you should shoot a pilot for a goddamn reality show. Yeah, but who's watching TV anymore? Yeah, but guess what? Like, I don't, like, why? Why not just continue, like, my vlogs and put it on YouTube? We can control the whole Thing. Where's the upside? Look, think about what you know what I'm saying. Grew. They ended up stopping yeah. doing their TV show because they didn't own it. Right. And somebody else owned them. Up. Now they'll come back on in a year and they'll own everything after that non-compete period. Yeah. So yeah. Like, and they'll, they'll have they have the leverage. Family, like, Fuck you, you're yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they'll have the leverage. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's that's like that's and that's why. So I go back to my personal brand and trying to build that because there's so much value the in it. Side. The consulting side, or just like just building value. Like I don't. The thankfully. Success breeds success. Right, and I don't have to make any money off of that. Like my business makes me plenty of money. I want to help other people. Eventually, I'll be able to capitalize on that if I decide to sell this company one day right. and start something new. I'll have an audience that I can be like, hey, check out my new thing. Right. I'll take a portion of them to you know, and they'll follow that and they'll support me and they'll buy it or whatever yeah. but um and that's the truth the re- think about it. you're like i don't need to make money from that uh, my business makes me plenty of money it's all that synergy man you you have the voice because of this and you have this because of I work in finance, God bless, no, it's not by chance, don't dab me, you're not my man, don't at me, you're not my man, mama said don't buy it if you cannot buy it twice, what do you guys think, I'm thinking we go a little bit lighter on the brown, it just, it's almost black, it's so, I think we're gonna have to walk and talk, we need to, are you hungry, I'm starving, I haven't eaten anything today, what do you want to eat, where's my keys, did Brandy come in and get my keys or something, yeah. She did? Yeah. She did come in? Came. Where's my keys at? You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. This is, this is like sort of left field a little bit, but have you considered to leverage what you're already doing uh, like for a YouTube channel? Take what you're doing, take Aaron's knowledge and his story turn it into a, a show, right? Basically a, like a food cooking show. Um, it's kind of a long play, but I think you guys could really capitalize on Aaron and his story and his situation and his knowledge and expertise. Like he knows what he's doing. Computer illiterate at all. I just know that there's so much to doing things like that. And I don't know how, like when you're starting out smaller time ish like I can buy quality stuff I just don't know how to do it all myself so I don't know how did you start doing all of that I started with my phone I mean you know it's funny as I the meeting I had just before you it was with a uh, video production guy and we were literally just talking about this he's like I got a $25,000 camera and like I'm over here you know trying to you know sell the quality of what we can do and you know it doesn't matter because everyone's watching videos that are shot on iPhones anyways you know and, yeah. and most people like and you don't realize what's shot on an iPhone and what's not if the content is there if like the story and the substance of the content is what that person wants to watch they're gonna watch right. it no matter yeah. what camera it was shot on like that's almost irrelevant till you get yeah. to a certain point or a certain level or something that you're trying to produce and it requires different equipment but I would say to be completely honest the biggest element of having a good video is good Uh audio so having like having your iPhone across the room when you're talking is going to be difficult I mean some of that like those are small details that you shouldn't get hung up on right now I think and I think there's a point where you just need to start like that's the the best thing you could do is just like just start 
just make the video. You have to stay consistent with it. So, yeah. you know. I think that's definitely something worth doing. I mean, how many pieces of content a week should... And I watch Gary Vee, and he's like, you should be putting out, like, ten things a day. Listen, <laughs> Gary is <laughs> Gary's super smart, and he's very talented and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. But he is also... Keep in mind that Gary is on the full extreme. Like, yeah, no right. one does things on an extreme level more than that guy like he's keep yeah. in mind too that like yeah. the amount of content he's putting out there's a he's got 20 25 guys helping create that content to put out every single day so don't compare right. yourself to, and like beat yourself up because you're not putting out 100 pieces of content a day like he suggests if you could get yeah. three pieces of content out in a day post something yeah. on facebook post something on instagram it could just be a picture yeah. it could be a quick video clip it's a story Maybe there's a tweet or a YouTube, like you, maybe you put out one YouTube video a week, but then there's the right. short version of that video or a picture from that video, the thumbnail that you post on Instagram and Facebook that drive yeah. people to the YouTube video. You know what I mean? So like right, there's different, right. like when Gary talks about a hundred pieces of content a day, it could be based on like five core things, but there's like 13 pieces of content to support the one thing. So he's counting that as... Right. 13 pieces of yeah. content it's like well so don't get super hung up on that and then as far as like editing so like if we just do a show should i just like start to finish just video everything we're doing or should i like try to do like edit stuff i don't even know how to do that so uh, I, I mean down. you could be you could do something as simple as using like iMovie if you have a mac or yeah. something and yeah, it's completely free and it you're it has plenty of capabilities for what you guys need to try to accomplish. Um, mm -hmm. I think you need to be somewhat strategic about the videos that you do um, and how you want to do it. Like vlog style videos aren't going to get you the virality and the exposure and yeah. or the growth. Like people, I just don't pe right, think people right. are going to latch onto that. And it's hard to get YouTube to suggest vlog style videos. And they're mm -hmm. honestly kind of harder to produce and keep interesting. If you right. did videos based on a certain topic, though, that was like, you know, how we make our this or without maybe have some recipes, you don't want to like give out all the information. But it, even if it was like some super random, interesting, like how to make a heart shaped chocolate or how something that's relevant right. or, you know, how yeah. how a blind guy cooks this or right. yeah. like the I feel like those videos could go have a much better chance of going viral than just like recording everything yeah. and it's a very strategic thought out planned video um for youtube and then you just have to test and learn you look at the analytics from that and i can show you a few of the things to look for on youtube as far as the analytics of you know your average view duration and where people fall off and what they might have found interesting and what they might have found yeah. to be boring the thumbnail right. really matters you know there's a lot of little things that we could go on a sure. more in-depth conversation around youtube if that's the, the the direction you decide you want to go or try or yeah. test all right Eve, thanks so much of course you've got my number now so call me or text me right. probably texting me is probably the best thing but uh yeah, you know i'm happy to talk okay. to you guys anytime and do what i can to Thank help you. and yeah, uh, thanks. i wish you guys nothing but the best Hey, likewise. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Talk to you later. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. You guys, you can't overthink it. This is the this is the theme of the video right here. Don't overthink the equipment you're using to create content. You can make it with your phone. You can make it with a fancy camera. You can do whatever, but you have to start and you have to be consistent. You can't give up after the first. You have to find what works, find what doesn't work, do more of what works, and continue on. Okay. I was eating a quick lunch here. I headed back to the office, got another meeting with a guy that's doing a Kickstarter campaign. Ow, I bit the side of my cheek, that hurt. Doing a Kickstarter campaign. Um, I think there's gonna be some really, really good information through that, but, uh, but, um, I don't know, I don't know, I got nothing. Yo! Hey, man. What's up? Finally, nice to meet you. Man. Yeah, man, you too. Good to meet good, you. Good. Doing all right? I was just asking about the races, y'all. Oh, yeah. A couple of rods. And... Yeah, we snapped some tie rod ends. A uh, couple of track bars. Jeeps are hard on steering components. 
You guys, this, can we show this thing yet? Absolutely. Okay, so this yeah. is like a thing. This is gonna be the coolest thing you guys have ever seen. Well, at least for me, because because I use a pop socket on my phone and he's gonna tell us all about it. But basically, it's for wireless charging. And if you have a pop socket, you'll know that it holds your phone too far off of the charger to get your wireless charging uh, to work. So yeah. what he's developed and created is the capability to use a pop socket on a wireless charger so that it sits flush and would charge. So this is really cool. And yeah. I can't wait to know and see more about it. And this is the car version, uh -huh. and it's actually uh, water resistant, so you can use it on your boat, your golf oh, cart. Cool. And then it just sits in. Yeah, so holds it cradle. and charges it too. Yeah. What can I do to help? I don't. Well, right now, I mean, I want to get as many people to Kickstarter, but sure. I want to. I really wanted to pick your brain about. Uh, I've never really done a consumer product. I mean, mm -hmm. so consumer products are they're just they're unique and they're different, but they're also there's a certain way to get them out there. Right. And I love the fact that what you did pretty much out of your garage to get to here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what do we do with this? Like, you know, we know the public likes it. We know it's a good marketable product. Um, I would like to be where you're at. I mean, that's my goal. If you could take tactical baby gear and insert my product. Yeah. That's really what I want. And one thing I've watched even with you, you know, it's like I've kind of followed you from the outsides. And to see where you're at today, yeah. I mean, I'm being honest. I know I'm on TV and I'm not just trying to pat him on the back. This guy's amazing. And to be sitting in this room and see it in person, I'm honored. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Time. Thank you. Know, you. I mean that. It, you know, this is a different, a little bit of a different market, you know, and, and I'm thinking through in my head right now how I would do it if I was in your shoes and what, what approach I would take to selling this. To me, this is a, you know, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, anywhere that sells electronics. Yeah. That is my first thought because pop socket's going to do that with their version of it, yeah. it assuming it, unless there's like a patent battle yeah. and you have to you can are able to shut them down and then they're buying it from you and that you're selling awesome. it for 30 million dollars that's what we actually have our you know what i'm saying like that's a real option um at any rate that that's my first initial impression like you have to get to the mass market with this like yeah. because it's it's very difficult to create a brand around this like, I can create a brand around Tactical Baby Gear because it's a lifestyle. Absolutely. It's hard to create a lifestyle around a, a phone charger. It is. It's a product. Yeah. It's not so much a brand. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, the approach is very different in my eyes. Um, now, probably. you could go direct to consumer with this without having to create a brand, per se, because you could run the shit out of Facebook ads and sell it on. And that's what we're doing. Sell now. it direct to the consumer through your website and through Amazon and everywhere else. I think the price point's really low. Like on Kickstarter, this is like well, 15 bucks 40, or something. We're doing it for 42% off. Sell it for 45, you're winning all day long. Because you have to have enough room in there for wholesale. Yeah, for margins, yeah. Because you're going to sell it for 40 or 45 bucks. Target or Walmart, whoever is going to want it for half of that. Yeah. And yeah. you guys still make money. Absolutely. And then even a direct-to-consumer, there's a cost of marketing it and everything else that goes. I mean, there's... Sure. Every time somebody touches it. Well, I mean, you, it could cost you... It could cost you 10 or 12 bucks to sell each one of these through marketing. Yeah. You know, you're caught like a Facebook ad, cost yeah, to acquire yeah. a customer on Facebook could be 10 or 12 bucks. Absolutely. You know, so. Yeah, man. I, you I, start eating up profit on these little fucking spots, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, you know, and, you know, I've taught, I have a video of it on, on that. It's on YouTube. that's like, are you actually making money? That's yeah, awesome, man. dude. That's so rad. So, so uh, Kickstarter's live. Yeah, we How's that it. going? Dude, we started last Tuesday, and we, we're halfway through our goal right now. We've got 32 more days. We hit 13 grand as of this morning, and our goal is 25 grand. So You feeling confident about it? Oh, yeah. Um, the, are you doing anything? What are you doing to promote it? Well, basically, right now, we're paying Aventus because they're running the Kickstarter program. Got and it. Um, I didn't realize the, the whole Kickstarter group is a very eclectic group. It's, it's, I tried to launch Tactical Baby Gear through Kickstarter. They wouldn't let me. Really? Because I was already doing it, and it wasn't new. Okay. I was just trying to figure out, I was trying to raise capital Absolutely. to do more. Yeah. And they were like, oh, this is already an existing product. This isn't new. Like, yeah. this is for new stuff. They've gotten, I mean, I think they, the bigger Kickstarter's gotten, I think they've gotten more... Uh, lenient? Yeah, well, I don't know, but maybe more well, lenient, because there's a lot of video games 
and stuff on there. And I'm like, these that's, aren't new. These aren't. Yeah. You know, but they're well, there's a lot of people. Money. Yeah. And there's, that's the thing, though. It's like, well, there's a lot of company like Nomadic or whoever. It's like, they're very big, popular, well known brands that, like, yeah. they come out with a new bag design and launch it on Kickstarter and pre sell them. Moen's got a new faucet on there right now and just hit over a million dollars last week. Right. <laughs> so it's like, it's super yeah. interesting. Yeah. They, they denied me. They wouldn't approve it. And I was like, what the crap? Yeah. And so I basically, at my you had to prove to them? I had to prove to them. So on my cell phone, um, I have I have two cell phones. I have a work phone. I have my own. I'm sitting there video. It's actually on the Kickstarter website right now of me talking with my wife's picture on the phone. Right. And I didn't know they were going to use it. Yeah. But I had to send it to them just because we were launching the next day, and they're like, "Hey, we got to know that this works before people start investing it." And so I did. I just sent them two videos of each one showing that it works. And yeah. Now it's on there. I didn't know. I would have. I would have called you to do a better video. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, but he. You know what's funny is that's the theme of the day. I just talked to some two other people today. And about how cell phone video is perfectly acceptable. Like you don't have to have a four or five thousand. It's, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> it, it's raw so, and authentic, though. You can't that you can't fake that. Like this is authentic. Yeah. Like it's from my cell phone in yeah. the salon. Well, like it's real. She's like, well, if you knew you were going to be on Kickstarter, you should have at least yeah. like, you know sharpened Done your voice something. up or something. Yeah. Like, Whatever. I don't know. But yeah. But for me to say that I need this from you, I don't need, I just wanted to meet you and okay. you tell me, you know, and at any time, you know, if you ever, I'm sure as we get into production, I'm going to be calling you and be like, hey, I'm you know, happy to help. You know, I'm super I'd happy to help. I'd love to be involved in somehow. Like, yeah. You know, I, I'd love it. I think it's great. I would, I totally, whatever I could do. Trav, can you find me a USB, uh, micro USB to plug um, in so we can demonstrate this? Yeah. After the Kickstarter campaign, I'm very curious to like, let's let that finish. I want to know how it does. Yeah, yeah. And I'd love to have you come back and let's sit down and do a podcast about it. Oh, I'd love it. That'd be love awesome. It. Yeah. Yeah, let's go in there. Let's turn into a little something. You guys, I'm here with David and he has created a product called Grip Docket. If you are like me and you use a pop socket, you know that you cannot take advantage of the wireless capability, the wireless charging capabilities of your phone until now. So this allows you to use all types of like pop sockets. Uh, the final version will allow you to use the rings and the loopies and all the different things you use to hold your phone uh, so you don't drop it. It is live on Kickstarter right now. Go check it out. This is a game changer for me. Look at that. I'll tag you in this and uh, I'll text you that link. Awesome. Thanks, Sweet. Sweet. Sounds good. You got it. Oh, Travis. This is Travis. Travis. Nice, nice to meet you, buddy. Hey, man, you take care. All right. Thanks. Later. Hey, Brody. How, How are you, man? Buddy? Yeah, good, good, to see see you. You. good to see you again. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. Good right, to meet nice you. Meet good you. to meet you. Yeah. So I wanted Ryan to meet you. you yeah, know, Ryan, definitely. Come on. He's developing a product line and he's a hiker of sorts. Uh huh. He's hiked every a hiker of, of sorts, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done six National Scenic Trails, Appalachian Trail 2016, Pacific Crest Trail 2017, Continental Divide Trail, which was the longest so far, 3,100 miles. 3,000 miles? Yeah, Mexico to Canada. That was uh, 2018. Crazy. He can test gear. La yeah, last year I did the Pinhoti Trail, which is just a baby trail to get warmed up, 400 miles. Then I hopped over to the PMT, which I'm wearing now. That was 1,200 miles of route finding. It was a designated trail. You had to get on top of a peak sometimes and look like down a valley. And find your way. Find your way. That was awesome. Then I hopped over to Wisconsin, set a speed record on that trail for 1,200 miles. I did that 37 days with three full zero days and a lot of Nero days. So when I was on trail, I was averaging over 40 mile days. And then I hopped on over to the Arizona Trail bang that out is he even human i know right that's crazy 40 miles a so day my plan i don't do 40 miles in a week so my plan this upcoming year actually end of march i'm going out to new england trail i'm gonna start off slow 30 mile days out there do that in about a week it's only 200 miles then hop over to the natchez trail and i'm gonna do 45ers consistently for 10 days set an unsupported speed record on that hop over to uh, the potomac heritage trail set an unsupported well self-supported speed record on that 700 miles, 45 mile days, 18, 17 days or something. His goal is to so. become the youngest hiker to hike all 11 national scenic trails, national scenic trails in yep. the country. And then I'll be setting first, well, I'll be setting speed records on those trails as well as the first person to ever fully document those trails. I was the first person last year to fully document the Ice Age Trail in Wisconsin as a through hike. People had so, what are you doing to document it? Like you so got I'm a camera doing, and you're I'm just doing YouTube right now. With yeah. GoPro yeah. Yeah. I'm carrying everything on my back. Right. So yeah. You're going hard. super lightweight. It's hard yeah. to keep like of course. 
heavy equipment gear. Like yeah, like that. Like yeah. This right here. So I have a little hip, hip belt that I just yeah. pop the GoPro in, pop it back out. Got quality a couple of batteries the, with you. And yeah, quality of the film, not as great as it could be. Yeah. But um, well, that's a sacrifice. Kind of documented, yeah, that's yeah. super cool. Have yeah. you gained traction with that on the documentation side of YouTube and like people following that? I have about a thousand followers right now, yeah. but they're not, it's not the following of somebody that's creating these five minute clips for YouTube that it's reaching the masses. My following's like really dedicated to me mm -hmm. and they're dedicated, these my videos are two hours long. Oh wow. For, for a segment. And they're watching all those. It's like raw, like the whole thing, yeah. Because it's telling the hikers, it's mostly for through hikers behind me especially with these undocumented trails. Hey, there's a water source here. You're gonna have to carry water for 30 miles. Um, That's crazy, it's, it's so cool. It's out of the garage, out of the living room. Oh, you and created it? Yeah, Are yeah. I sewing, sewing everything together? So yeah, I, I created some of the early versions and then I would outsource some stuff. And then there was a period of time where, cause I was still, I ever had a full-time car business. I was building custom cars and you know, and then coming home at seven o'clock at night after picking up the kids from daycare, after working in the shop for 12 hours. And you know, it's like pick them up, dinner, bath time, get them to bed, then deal with tactical baby gear. But I knew I had traction with it. so. I just kept going. I was like, I've got something. People love it. I've got to keep going. And then I, for a while, I had, I was buying, for a little while, I was buying bags and repurposing them, rebranding oh, them. Okay. You know, I, so I would, you were essentially, yeah. essentially, I would take, I would make a, a small modification to the bag to make it unique to me and what we were trying to accomplish with baby stuff, rebranding it and then selling it and reshipping it. That's, that got me through a period of time between like being able to make it myself and be able to go mass manufacturing. Like that filled this little bit of a gap and took a little bit of weight off my shoulders to be able to like take that next step. So, um, and then it's just slowly evolved and grown into what it is now. We, Seems like it's grown quite, quite a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty wild. It's been cool. So what, um, tell me more. So you bought a business or you, what's this? So I went out to Montana to buy an outdoor business, um, and I had tested the product. What got me to it, I had tested the product this year for 3,000 miles through 120 degrees in Alabama. I tested it on Glissading Down Mountains in Montana. I tested it in Arizona through the dry heat. I tested it on 3,000 miles, and the product never broke down. Like, the short itself, no wear and tear. The only time I actually, it's funny, the only time I had to break the product is I was in Walmart and I couldn't get into the pocket, so I had to cut the mesh with scissors while I was in Walmart. But on the trail itself, it never broke down. Right. So And this is this is a shorts? These are shorts. Yeah. Okay, so apparel Previously, stuff. The three years before that I had been going through four or five pairs of shorts on any given hiking year. Because they just get you get caught by something, they're just end up getting Yeah, they just wear out, break down. Break yeah. Down. But these ones lasted for three thousand miles, so he talks about shorts like they're tires. It's an investment. It was an investment for me. I mean, when you're hiking and you're not making a wage out on the trail, you're trying to make that scent last. Of course. So buying four pairs of shorts, that's $250 right there instead of one pair of shorts, 50 bucks. So it was really, it was a big thing for me. So I went out to Montana. That's what drew me out there. I didn't like how he was running this business. It was too messy for me to buy the entire business itself. But he had a good product, but he had a good product, which is why you were interested. Which is, yeah, which is why I was interested. So I just treated him like an artist or just a contractor pretty much. And you can't patent a short pattern because it's a, a piece of, you, you know, it's a piece of apparel. You can't really patent that. But I wanted him to feel like he was walking away with something. So I bought the short patterns from him. And now I've just been trying to grow my business around the shorts itself, ultimately trying to branch out. I'm just hyper focused on the shorts right now. And then. So now, the pat you, you buying the short pattern from him and the materials he's using and all that stuff, like you have all that IP? I have all the vendor lists. Um, okay. I'm, yeah, so, so Ryan you know, was going to go out there and buy the business, and then he said, really, I want to just focus on the shorts. And he said this before he left. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you still ought to go out there and learn the business, learn what you need to know. Yeah. And uh, he did, and he came back and said, yeah, two weeks later, and said, I, I bought the pattern. I'm, I'm good. I'm not. 
I wanted no part of it. <laughs> no part of it. Pretty the much. rest yeah. of it, yeah. It was, yeah. It was so messy. I mean, I've told him parts of it, but it was so interwoven into everything that that guy was that taking that business away from him, he would never be clear of it. Even if I bought it, contract was all set. It's too personally tied into too everything. Too personally tied yeah. into everything that he was part of. Which is, which is really easy to do in the beginning because you're like, oh, it's just me. I just, you know, da, da, da. It's like everything's tied to your personal email address or personal credit cards or personal this or personal that or per- and like that happened here easily you know it's like because it was just me for years yeah. Yeah. you know you're like well, what does it matter like yeah. what, what am i gonna set up nine different emails I'm like no i ain't got time for that you know and then as it grows and you get a business partner and then there's all these other employees and all stuff and then it's like well yeah. he needs access to this and, and then we have to really separate ourselves yeah. uh because on so many levels both just like stupid stuff like that of like logging into stuff with a personal email address and password or whatever credit cards but then it's like liability wise we're like well i as a person need to be somewhat separated from the business just because who knows what happens or what you know so you know but it's like you kind of have to grow out of that phase anyways you get the short that's all you care about (laughs) off to the races and that was his whole goal going out there is to get the short so yeah the past three months has just been trying to build man yeah working with manufacturers um it's tough got taken for a ride with the manufacturer really first month um they treated me terrible like technically what they were doing was illegal as well so i got taken for a ride for them and now were you doing who are you working with a domestic manufacturer or someone overseas or i want to keep it in the u.s US. at least the first couple production runs so the name itself can build as made in usa and people will see its quality I've talked to overseas manufacturers, but I know not a lot gets lost here in China, but people, there's a stigma to it. There is. We have to be careful about it. I mean, we just, we recently got out of China, went to Vietnam, mostly over the trade war and the tariffs. No. Uh, We talked to a manufacturer from San, their, their, their production is in the city where the coronavirus is. Well, we're dealing with some stuff that's in quarantine. We'll be open in April or May. We're like, what? Yeah. yeah, we're dealing with a product right now um, that we're working on that's, uh, the f- fabric is still sourced out of China, oh. and it's all in quarantine right now, yeah. so we're like... Can't even get the fabric? <laughs> sitting there waiting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. it sucks. So, hopefully, I mean, it's Chinese New Year right now, so all the yeah. manufacturing <laughs> shut yeah, down. It's all, it's all shut down anyways right now, so hopefully it really doesn't delay us too much, mm-hmm. but... We're Did you start off? I mean, you well, he made it his own, but then, and then from yourself, did you go to China right after that? Pretty much, yeah. You did? Yeah. You never tried to work with American manufacturers and machines? It's too expensive. I mean, they cost, like, we're dealing with new parents that don't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So for us to make a bag in the U.S. would have to sell for probably $250 Ooh. plus. What did you pay for a backpack that you hiked with? $250? Yeah. yeah. But they're... Yeah, they're custom made. Um, made. They're made in the U.S. Right. That's why they're also charging. They're yeah, that's why they're so expensive. Yeah. You know, like yeah. this bag right here. This is a new version that no one's seen. This is a prototype that I've been out testing. But right. you know, you can quali- look at some of the quality of the bag and stuff. I mean, we'll retail that for like a hundred bucks. Wow. Um, there's a lot of you know neat features into it, and a lot of. Frame? No, yeah. no, there's no frame in it. There's foam. Aluminum no. No, aluminum no, there's there's foam here. So, now how do you start marketing your stuff? Just to people you know, other parents. Instagram, Instagram. Yeah. I built the whole freaking thing on Instagram. Did you really? Yeah. And so is it I, but I got powerful as it was when you started. Uh, no. No. And that's the thing I was about to say. Like I got started on Instagram doing this early on. Like I was. That's how I marketed my car business as well. Because we did a lot of like national stuff. We weren't like just a local car repair shop we did a lot of like custom builds for big name people and i would people were shipping stuff in from wisconsin and hawaii and virginia and we were building custom stuff and um so i used instagram for that and i so i already knew my way around instagram i knew the hacks i knew the tricks and the secrets and all stuff and i had a decent following there and i knew a lot of people who had a lot of followers perfect i'm sending you a bag like tag me you know, so it was like overnight had like 13,000 followers from like some wow. of the right people. So, so your first run was sold out almost instantly. Did you do a free production promotion? Yeah. Um, no. You didn't do a free production promotion? I don't, maybe, I may have done like pre-sale like two weeks before they were here. Mm-hmm. But like, I have never been one to want to, like, I don't want to have to owe anything to anybody. I've been very hesitant with it 
like the stress and the pressure from that because all of a sudden there's a like well you're doing stuff in the u.s but like for us it's like all of a sudden something's coming into port it gets delayed they want to do an inspection it's held up for three weeks now you got people pounding on your door sending me emails i bought these shorts forever ago where are they i'm supposed to go on a hike you know whatever and you're like and you're like i'm sorry i'll refund you your shipping or whatever to like make them happy and now you're losing all your money and then it's awful it's a terrible experience for them from the get-go so I've never really pre-sold anything unless it was like inbound and I know it's gonna land in my warehouse Friday and we can start shipping it Monday and it's like a very solid thing or there's high demand for it. And I like this one particular thing we're working on now, it's like I'll never pre-sell anything if it's beyond like a week or two out because I just don't want people. That's what I was kind of thinking as well. I mean. I mean, it's nice to be able to get that money and like start doing things with it, but like, ah. I was hesitant as well. I mean, the manufacturers when I started putting feelers out for them, they kept asking, hey, can I go to your website, check all this stuff out? And I haven't published my website because I don't want people coming on into it until there's a product that they can instantly click that button. It's not bad. If you have enough information about it up front or you have any other, I don't know if you have videos from the past talking about it or anything. But if you have some stuff on a website, the best thing you could do is allow people to check it out, even if they can't purchase it. Available soon. Give me your email address. We'll let you know when they're in stock. Yeah. Stuff like that. So if you can start collecting data from people, the Facebook pixel from the Facebook ads manager is something that you're going to want to put on there if you haven't yet. That will track everybody that comes to the site. And then once it's available, you can run ads to all those people who've been there and say, hey, shorts are in stock. Come get oh, them 10% cool. off. Like a big launch strategy. Yeah, it's Facebook. Yeah, it's a pixel. It's in the. It's part of the ads manager. I've got videos on it that you can check out. So that ad will pop up on their side margin, right? Side thing, or yeah. just in their feed, and yeah. you know what I mean. Or I mean, if you can collect email addresses, you know, so stuff like, for instance, we have stuff that periodically will go out of stock. It could be a T-shirt or a patch or a bag or whatever. But it's like notify me when this is back in stock. They put in their email address. Then when it's back in stock, we send out an email. And it will just automate it back. That's automated that portion of it, but. You could just be collecting email addresses. You think so? Hell yeah. Even before you have product to sell? Hell yeah. I was really hesitant with that. Because Elite, let it go live and just have, be able to like, if you want to know when this is in stock or whatever, or start doing videos or You're Instagram. I'm committed. I'm committed, but I, yeah. Well, no one's going to steal it or knock it off. Or like, What's the worst that happens? They come to your site, they can't buy it, and they leave. Yeah, but isn't that a bad PR right off the bat? No, just make sure make it available soon, coming soon. People always want what they can't have. Something like soon, yeah. Well, I mean, special deals once it gets out there. I mean, I, but the be, you could you could be collecting email addresses and Facebook data and all kinds of stuff right now. Phone numbers, text text messaging, mm. marketing is a huge deal right now. It's very powerful. You have to be very careful with it. Yeah, because you don't want to be like privacy of your text. Messages. Right, right. But like, yeah. if people, if you just kind of have it there and let people opt into text messaging, like. They are super interested. Like you probably have a name for yourself in that community already that people are, I'm sure, very aware of who you are. Yeah. So if they're going to your website and they want to know about the shorts that you're making for that specific thing, mm-hmm. they they're going to buy it. Like. Well, that's what I think too. I just. So I would that way. That way you don't have to pre-sell it, and you can have that data. Yeah. And you send out an email to 600 people on day one as soon as they land, hmm. and 100 of them buy. So you, you know what I mean? Make, you're saying make it live before then. Heck yeah. Hmm. Could do that. Even if you have prototypes to talk about or anything, it's like, hey, here's, you know, this is what the shorts are going to be. Mm-hmm. This is what I I hiked this thing. They're awesome. They can't break down. They, the, the same story you told me. They're super rad. Yeah, Just you mean, at home or in the garage or yeah. whatever talking would, about it. Would you even reference the previous company or would you try to just not even reference a previous company? Because would that be a selling point? Hey, this guy created these shorts for 30 plus years? Or would that I be loved them so much, I bought the design. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But wouldn't that also try to direct people back to those original yeah, products? You don't have to say who it is, yeah. necessarily, unless he's like super known. He's not super known. <laughs> he's not. Well, then, then don't worry about it. Yeah. Hey, this guy reached out. There's a, there's he's a company. been building these shorts for 30 years. You haven't been able to get them publicly. I mean, who's going to I like them so much. I, I bought them. I design. bought the design. Yeah. Now I'm going to make them available for everyone that's hiking and da 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 da. So you wouldn't be hesitant to reference a previous company then? 
I don't. I think it's part of the story. You don't, have to reference the you don't have to reference the name of the company. Just be like, hey, I found a company that was making these shorts. Mm -hmm. They were like, nobody knows who they are. I just happened to come across them, or whatever. It's family. I don't know. That's whatever you want to say. It doesn't matter. It it's irrelevant. I liked them. They were so awesome. I liked them so much. I bought the shorts that's design. What you did. I mean, that's exactly what that speaks that 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 speaks for like if people already know and you're like I hiked three thousand miles in a single pair of shorts I like them so much I bought the design. Well, that's what I put already. Uh, my website's not live, but I put all the template, all the info, info in, and that, that's what I put for one of my first articles. The kickoff article was I liked them so much with the three thousand miles. I told about the weather, the terrain, right? All that stuff. Perfect. And I promoted all that, but it was just. Not wanting to say I got it from someone else, com another company. Well, whatever. But also, that feels if I don't say that, that it's, it builds credibility for the product. I think that, so too. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah, I think it builds like yeah. instantly. You're like, damn, those things must be good if you bought the design. Yeah. Well, my, I think my number one, I would make your website live as soon as possible. I think yeah. the more you know, for everybody, not just just one person. Okay? Well, I to his point though, like going super niche in the beginning probably is the worst thing. But I wouldn't single out because that's what I'm saying. It's easier to penetrate the hiking market because you have a name in that market, and then use that to like grow it, like establish a core, prove yourself there, get the social proof, get the reviews, get, and then use that as leverage to, to yeah, go I'm wide. Sure. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. Be now that I've done this, you send the name with the, almost all the social media accounts a lot of these guys, but you say only activate the website because I don't have content on. I would put. I would. I would turn everything on now. 11's got Instagram, 11's, Everything. 11's got Facebook, 11's got Pinterest, 11's got YouTube, <laughs> 11's got YouTube. all of it. And start putting content in there. Hell yeah. Yeah? Yep. All right, I might do that. Cool. I got to do a lot of Because it's going to, if you don't, if you wait until the, it's going to take you that much longer to get the ball rolling. Like if you start pushing that ball now, it'll have momentum by the time you launch, the, by the shorts available, mm -hmm. and then you're just. The shorts are going to be available at the end of March, right? But only promote, don't promote it as a pre-sale. Promote it as coming like soon. Yeah. Yep. Let me, if you want to know when these are going to be available, the best shorts I've ever used. I bought the design. If you want to know it's going to be available, sign up here. I'll let you know. They're going to sell out fast. I think you're going to have to send these. Like yeah. Might hook, you, might hook you guys. <laughs> yeah. They, they're not. They're not fashion statements though. They look. They're pretty straight. Straight cut. Just simple. Right. It's not. Ultimately, I'm going to start working on the colors are pretty funky. Yeah. You're using some fun you're, colors. Through hike is a weird. Like we're a weird, we're a weird culture. <laughs> we got Sounds like I feel like John, like he's like neon yellow and pink. Mm -hmm. I would be open to those colors, man. Yeah, I know. I, I, he does work. Look, I'm wear, I'm wear this. My daughter made this for my personal trainer. Those look like his shorts. <laughs> hey, this. <laughs> so like. Oh, he's got a pair like that. Yeah, bright well, colors, yeah. funky stuff. I yeah, get it. I know. That's yeah. what your culture is, man. So. so you don't yeah. Don't Anything else? Do you have any other specific questions no, or? This is I think so doing much. that stuff, I will give you need to go to my YouTube channel yep. and there's a video about there's multiple videos about the Facebook pixel. Oh. It's gonna be super important to you okay. to make sure what are you using for a website? It's all on website now, but I'm thinking of moving over. I would highly recommend Shopify. You think so? Yeah. I mean they're 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 like a multi billion dollar company. They've got all the support you could ever want. They're that's like we're on Shopify, but and so are so many other. I mean, they have, it's they're the largest e-commerce platform, mm -hmm. period. And is that how you created your website, Shopify? It's all on Shopify. It's not Wix. No. And you can do all that personal touches in Shopify. Yeah, there's like a bajillion themes on there. Yeah. There's like probably thirty free themes, and then there's and then they start twenty five bucks so up to one hundred fifty bucks, two hundred bucks. You know what I mean for like a custom, more custom one. But like mm -hmm. we were doing millions of dollars a year on a free theme, like. You know, you don't but have you to get, pay 170 bucks or something or whatever. It, it's like, it, you know, so, um, but I believe as an e-commerce direct to consumer brand that Shopify is your, especially starting at your best chance to compete against Amazon so. because Shopify offers all kinds of financing and incentive deals that all their shop, their payment, uh, gateway through, like with processing credit cards and stuff, they mm -hmm. offer like a lot of different options there. They have Shopify Pay, so people that, if a lot of people, turns out, 
have a Shopify Pay account where it saves all their credit card information. Kind of like Amazon. Kind of like Amazon. So when you go to a Shopify website, it automatically pulls up your sh payment information. It's like one click. You're like, yeah, I want that. One click. Bye. But that makes life so easy. But will Shopify let you have that personalized domain name? Yeah. It will? Yeah. It's not going to be Shopify. Dot. dot what, no, no, no. Oh, okay. You just buy the domain and redirect it. To, it's super easy. We've done that. Nine hundred times, <laughs> and then, but they only also then they announced last year. I don't know if they started rolling it out yet, but Shopify fulfillment, where they're gonna own oh, fulfillment cool. centers around the country now, and they will do fulfillment for you. Really? Right now, you're getting the product delivered where? Here. I'm gonna have Robbie send it out. I mean, I can't send it out. I'm gonna be on sale. Yeah. So, I mean, I was gonna use Amazon fulfillment center, but initially, if my product's not. I think it will hit pretty well, but they start charging you if it comes warehousing fees and to too fees. long and yeah. yep. And he's it's already a, paying more because yeah. it's being uh, manufactured here, so he's already yeah. That you're just going to continue to take a hit. Yeah. Now Shopify, I don't know what Shopify p fulfillments their details are around their costs and well, warehousing and all that kind of stuff. I have no idea, but as to not be at the mercy of Amazon because yeah. like Amazon is like a blessing and a curse. Like it's an it's like a necessary evil at yeah. this point. Like we sell on Amazon, we do very well on Amazon. Mm -hmm. If I could not be on Amazon, I wouldn't. Like really? it costs a lot of money to sell through them. Does it? They take fifteen percent, and then it's this, and it's that, and then I'll, it's really like twenty percent because it's of all these. Yeah. 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 Did yeah. you ever work with a full service manufacturer? Did you ever have the manufacturer send it directly out to your consumer? No. You never tried that. No, none of our. Factories are set up for anything like that because our manufacturing is overseas, so yeah, they're not going to yeah, send it from China. To, individual okay. packaging, no way. And yeah, we we out. ship in full containers, and then to our warehouse, and then go from there. That worries me a little bit, unless you have a lot of faith and trust in them, because I've seen and heard so many crazy stories about like, you know, them selling it out the back door because they control all of it and then all of a sudden you're like, well, how come there's a knockoff version of my thing on Amazon? Well, we're doing a no non-compete. Right, right, right on yeah. That. I mean, that's where I learned a lot. There's a lot of like, I mean, I've heard crazy shit, you know what I mean? Where you're like, what the crap? I learned a lot with the ride I was taking on. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really it's super it, good man. to meet you guys. Yeah, you well, too. <laughs>